And so people are using information that is meant to be lived. Mm -hmm. They apply it only when they're losing, so to speak. Right. But by the time you know you're losing, a lot of times you may almost you may have almost lost. It may yeah. be too late. Right. So this information is not only to save you, it's really to serve you, but it can only serve you with consistent interaction, consistent right. ingestion, consistent digestion. Yeah. It is meant to keep you in a place. It's not meant to save you from the place you're in all the time. You're not mm -hmm. using it correctly. It's great to have right. band-aids, but I prefer not to have to use it. Exactly. I'm glad when I need it, right? But I prefer not to have to need it, right? So things like that, right? Yeah. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. Happy Saturday. Glad to see you all again. It's always an honor and a pleasure to be here with you. We are here in Mindset Saturdays where we learn how to think in order to live well. So it is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful to see you all. All right. Uh, we are going to we're going to get pretty much right into it, but I'll ask one one question all right so i know some of you are driving can't see and things like that in different places george t balk george balk and francis bellamy does anybody know who these two people are george balk and francis bellamy No. 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 Two. Anybody? No. Okay. So these essentially were the two people who came up what we call what, what who came up with what we call the Pledge of Allegiance. It's not clear. I'm just writing it just to write it. The Pledge of Allegiance. George Balk was a Civil War veteran who came up with the Pledge of Allegiance pretty much for the same reason Francis Bellamy, who followed him, did. George Balk, Balk wrote it first, and it was for the same reason that Francis Bellamy followed it up. Essentially, it is, it is, it was designed for two reasons. One, to go along with the American flags that they were wanting to sell as a form of patriotism and wanting to sell to schools. They wanted to have some kind of formalized saying to go along with it. And the second reason was because they felt at different times, these were about, what probably would say probably about 20 years apart from each other. But George Balk wrote it first. His, his iteration was a little different. Francis Bellamy was a, a, a socialist, a uh, Baptist minister who wrote something for what they call the Youth's Companion, which was a big magazine back in the day in the late 1800s, early late 1800s to early 1900s. It was a huge uh, magazine publication. It had over 500,000 subscribers and things like that to it. And essentially what they both wrote this for was to, what they say, um, remind ourselves of, of American patriotism to a certain degree. It was basically to get, they felt like the country's patriotism was waning from World War I, from all the different things that had been happening. They wanted to get us back on track, so to speak. So they created this Pledge of Allegiance to sell with flags that they sold in the schools, that they sold to schools, and they also wanted to create patriotism. So they wanted everyone to stand up and salute this flag. Now, what was funny about it, one of the funny things about it was the original salute was like this <laughs> the original salute was palms down and hands directly toward the flag because it wasn't called the flag originally it was called my flag i pledge allegiance to my flag but they changed that because there were so many immigrants coming in the country they did not want to they did not want people to think that they were talking about the flag from whence they came they wanted them to be referring to the American flag, so they changed my flag to the flag. However, what also is interesting is that this salute was pre-Hitler's salute. This was before Germany's salute. They did theirs first. It was hand out, palm down toward the flag. Then what would happen is they would go into this, 
into what you see the military do. And then they were going to hand over the heart at the end. So it was almost like a three part. It was like one here, one here, one there, right? So they changed it after, obviously after Hitler's thing got going and they've just brought it down straight to the heart. But theirs was actually first. The Pledge of Allegiance's hand straight toward the flag was actually first. But they did this because they wanted to reinstill what they formed, what they thought or felt was waning patriotism, right? They wanted your allegiance. They wanted your loyalty. They wanted, they wanted you to be, because the country at the time was still not fledgling, but it was very much separated in a lot of different ways, whether, whether it was gender, whether it was color and race, whether it was class, whether it was immigrants. There was a lot of moving parts still going on in this time of the country. So they were trying to establish an identity and, and a stable one at that, right? So that's why they had this Pledge of Allegiance. So saying that to say, right? Pledge of Allegiance. Now, the whole concept of a Pledge of Allegiance, right, is to, to feed your loyalty to something. And the reason I titled this class Pledge of Allegiance is because I hear, I hear some, I hear a whole lot of Pledge of Allegiances that are just, that are just not, not, that are just a no-go. So let me be the good guy and the bad guy at the same time. Good guy telling you the truth, bad guy telling you what you look like and what you sound like. I pledge allegiance to high blood pressure and diabetes. I pledge allegiance to poverty and check to check. I pledge allegiance to misery and it's somebody else's fault. I pledge allegiance to I don't understand or you don't understand me and this is my truth. I pledge allegiance to uh, nobody loves me and everybody's against me. I pledge allegiance to it's not what you know, it's who you know. I pledge allegiance to if I'm not grinding, I can't win. I pledge allegiance to, I mean, I could go on if you guys like, because I'm just getting warmed up, right? We have pledged allegiance to, we have pledged our loyalty to these things. We have pledged our undying, unending loyalty. And how can you, and how can you tell? Let you go on these classes for a couple of weeks and a couple months, right? And somebody says something to you, and you automatically now start replying the way this class would. You've changed your mind on maybe one or two things. And what ha and what happens to the person when, when they hear you say that? What do they say? When you say something different than what you said before, when you've actually changed your mind on maybe one or two things, what, what does that person do when you say that? Scooby-Doo. Okay, that. What else do people do? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? Okay. And then what else do they do? I just had it happen to me yesterday. You know what else they do? Then they recite the pledge because maybe you don't understand. Maybe you don't know where they're coming from. Maybe you don't see what they see. Maybe you don't feel what they feel. Maybe you just don't understand me. Maybe you just don't know about the, the plight of the black man. Maybe you just don't know what it is to be a woman. They will recite their pledge of misery. You don't know what it's like to have diabetes. You don't know what it's like to have high blood pressure. You just don't understand me. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You know what? Let me start over. You just don't know what it's like <laughs> to have diabetes and blood pressure. You don't know what it's like to feel like me. You don't know what it's like. Hold on. You don't know what it's like to feel like I feel. You don't know what. Yeah, they'll recite it because maybe you didn't understand how miserable they really are. You don't understand how loyal they are to my leg hurts. You don't understand how loyal they are to I can't get ahead. You just don't understand. I'm loyal to this thing. I'm undyingly loyal. I'm a patriot. I am a patriot of this state of poverty, of this depression. I can't leave. This is my homeland. This is my country. I'm just... I just, you know what, let me get, can I get the both hands? Can I do both at the same time? Can I? Yeah. Just turn it to a PE class. You just. <laughs> right? It's, 
It is, it is, we, and then we wonder why we keep experiencing the same things over and over. Go ahead. A sparkle baby says she calls BS on epilepsy coach. I ain't loyal. Okay, so before uh, Alberta and I were talking earlier before everybody got, before everybody else got in here on the call. And we were talking about what true freedom is, right? And most of us have been conditioned to believe that freedom is physical. That freedom is physical, the ability to come and go and everything like that and whatever else it is. We, we've been conditioned to believe that freedom is physical. But freedom is not physical. Freedom is mental. Freedom is expressed physically. Give you an example. If How would you know someone is a musician? How would you know someone is a musician? If you met someone and they told you they were a musician, or let's just say you met someone and they didn't tell you they were a musician, how would you know? By hearing them play music. Okay. If they if they didn't tell you they were a musician, how would you know they were a musician? You might not, unless you're able to pick up on certain traits, like seeing them, you know, listen to music and how they listen to it or whatever. Else. Okay. So you said seeing. What is seeing? Observing. Observing. What faculty is that? That's a part of your what? Sight. Vision. Yes. It's a part of your five. Senses. And the, and what part of the world is that? What part of your world is that? Your orientation. Your physical world. So they could be something without you knowing it, but you would only know what they are based on what they did. But they would only do what they did based on who they are. So you would not know someone's a musician until you saw them do something. So the physical thing that you see is happening because something is making that happen. How would you know someone's an artist without art? How would you know someone's a musician without music? So the art you see is because of the artist. The music you hear them playing or talking about is because they're a musician. So then the music they play is a direct reflection of who they are as a musician or who they are. The artist paints something. How can the artist say, that's not my art? How does the art not reflect the artist? So then how does your body not reflect you? So what is going on in your body that is a reflection of you that has not been fixed? How do you know? Because it's still happening. Right. So then, so then if there's any, if the artist wants to fix their painting, the artist has to fix themselves because they are the painter. The canvas does not paint. The paint does not paint. Only the painter uses the paint and the canvas to express themselves. The body is the music. The body is the art of the musician and the artist. It is a direct reflection and expression. It's a physical expression of the thing that a person has that you can't see because you can't see that person. So all you can see is what that person is thinking. That's what the physical world is for. The physical world is the canvas. It is the, it is the music. It is the instrument. It is the place that you can sell your wares, that you can show what, what's going on in you. What's going on in you is going on in you, but nobody will know what's going on in you if there's not a way or an apparatus or a medium to get it out for everyone to see. Your body is your canvas. Your body is your music. You are the artist and you are the musician. Your body is a physical thing. Your mon money is a physical thing. Health is a physical thing as far as being the way it's expressed, right? But it is a, really a state of mind. But all the physical things are, are there to be able to be seen in your physical world. But they are not creative. They are created. They are not, you can't fix physical with physical as much as we try to. Everything is fixed from the inside out because everything is started from the inside out. What we, what we express is only our experience. I've done this before. Let me give you an example. 
Let's see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Mm. Let's 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 do Monique. Monique, are you there? Yes. Tell me a play. Tell me, give me one state in America you have not been. Um, Delaware. Delaware. Perfect. So you have not been to Delaware. No. Okay. So describe Delaware to me. <laughs> um, there's streets, maybe. Oh, what does it smell like? I don't know. What does it look like? <laughs> I've never been there. Okay. So you cannot express, you cannot, you cannot use your physical apparatus to tell me something because you have not had the experience. Right. You know how we say you, you can't give what you don't have? Right. So then the only way you could express something is by having what? The experience. The experience first. So then the experience in the mental world is what? Hmm. What is the experience in the mental world? Created, made up, memory. An okay. An expression. All right. Who else? What is the experience in the mental world? An expression. Uh, okay, no. No, because memory expression is here. Imagination. Imagination. Mm. Imagination. Imagination. Image. Idea. Gene. Right? It's it's the it is this is the creative aspect that expresses. You cannot express something without the creative aspect. The expression is a physical reflection of the non-physical thing, but you can't see the physical thing. You can't hear the physical thing. You don't know what someone's thinking. You don't know how someone's feeling until they express it. By, you can only know by what they do, by the way, that by body language. What they say, uh, communication is 85% body language. But you don't know what someone's thinking until until they put, you don't know what a, if a painter, if somebody can draw until they put it on paper or on the wall or wherever they put it. You don't know if someone's seeing it, if someone can sing until they open their mouth. You don't know what's in until you see what's out. But just because you see what's out, it couldn't be out if it wasn't in. What? Yes, question, what? Um, Sparkle Bailey said, <clears throat> I created epilepsy in my mind first. And she said, I'll hang. Let me undo this thing today. No, you did not create that particular thing. You have an idea, and the idea said that particular thing is the best way to express the idea. Uh, Remember, I, I think we talked about this on the class during the week, which is great because there's some new people in this class. I was talking, I, we talked about this during the week in the mental club. When, remember when I said, you can say I'm broke all day, right? Then you spend two years working and you get a raise and your raise is 3,600 for the years, $300 a month. You got a raise, you spent two years, you did good work, you got a raise. So now you got $300 more a month. And you, but every day you're like, I can never get ahead. I'm broke. How, how come I'm living check to check all the time? How come money's so hard for me to make or so hard for me to get or keep? So you have this concept of yourself. So, but you're working every day trying to get ahead, but you're thinking broke, but you're working every day. You're using your body to try to get ahead. So now you use your body for two years and you got a raise $300 a month. And you're like, gosh, I did it. But you forgot. I have this concept that I'm broke. You feel good right now. You put it to the side. You forgot. But, your, but God does never forget. Your conscious, your subconscious mind never forgets. That's why you have dreams and nightmares, even though your conscious mind goes to sleep. Because your subconscious mind, the God mind, never sleeps. And it's always looking for ways to show you what you're thinking. Always. Sometimes it has to show you when you're awake. Sometimes it can only show you when you're asleep because you won't see it. Right? So it waits for you to see it. So you've got this new raise now. But I'm broke. It's hard to make it at this or that. All the things you're thinking. Then you worked your job. You worked your body and got a raise. $300 a month. 3,600 a year. You step out, drive out the parking lot and a light comes on, engine light comes on. And you're like, oh shoot, what happened? Then you told the car, the shop, are you able to make it? And they tell you your transitions, your transmissions out. 
Oh, wow. What? How much is it going to cost me? $3,200. Where did your raise go? You get home and your kids tell you, I need new cleats. I need a new bat. I need new this. I need new that. Your raise sucked up in an instant. But you worked for it. So you got it. But you have this thought or concept of yourself. Your relationship to money is is what it is. Your idea is what's going to be expressed. You think you can express yourself because of what you're doing physically, but your physicality is never going to outweigh your idea because you wouldn't have a physical thing without, a, without an idea. So it's going to come back. So you use a transmission to take away your raise. But what is it? It's a reflection of your mind. I'm always broke. I can't get ahead. This money's hard to make. I can't keep my money. Well, that transmission will do it to you. Somebody else, it may be your water heater may burst. Somebody else, it may be you need four new tires. Somebody else, it may be your kids ask you for things and you need a $500 deposit for this and $300 for this. And now you need this. And now all that money you worked for for two years, all that money you worked for is gone in an instant because humanity takes time. God is instant. Your subconscious mind knows the exact thing. Your God mind knows the exact thing to produce based on the orders and instructions you're giving it. So you're giving it orders and instructions when you say, I can't get ahead. You're giving it orders and instructions when you say, I'm sick. You're giving it order and instructions when you say, I have. When you say, I have, you are, you are, you are taking that as a possession, as a part of your experience. You're saying, I have a cold. You're saying, I have money. You're saying, I don't, I do, I this, I that. Those are all things that are going to be or going to not be part of your experience. So what happens is you have this idea in your mind of I'm broke, or you may have this idea in your mind of I am angry or I am, I am not valued or I am. There's an idea in your mind that produces every physical thing you see, whether it's in your body, whether every physical thing, your body is physical. Whether it's your body, whether it is your money, whether it is your every expression you have, your body is an expression. It is created. It is not creative. It is a result of the image, the imagining, the image that you have, the idea you have, the gene you have, the idea of what is going to be forecasted. It's a forecast. It's you are. This is predicting your future. You're always seeing ahead of your evidence. Humanity calls evidence when it gets into our physical world, into our five senses world. God calls it evidence as soon as it thinks about it. As soon as that's why it says, according to your faith, be it unto you. As a mind thinks, so is it. So goes your experience. It didn't say, so humanity is telling you it's physical. God is telling you it's mental. What does the Kabbalion say? The, the, the universe is mental. All is mind. All is mind. So that includes your body. So then, so anytime your body is doing something against your will, it doesn't mean it's going against your mind. You just don't like it, but it is following a pattern. So it is, it, this is the thing that is expressing it. So you may have an idea of anger, or you may have an idea of whatever it is. You have to kind of look at yourself and figure out, okay, what is this reflecting? What could this be reflecting internally? What is it I've been entertaining or believing about myself to be true to the point now where I have to express it? It has to come through my body. It may come through your body. Your, uh, somebody could have the same emotion as you, but their body wouldn't be good enough to do it. So somebody else's may be in their money. Somebody else's may be in their relationships, right? Where our, our subconscious mind is, our, is God. We have our own individual tailored experiences. So even though we may feel the same emotions, what gets us the exact congruent physical expression of that, the exact mirror reflection is different because to me that may not be that for you it's that for veronica it may be this for the other veronica it may be that even though you're holding the same emotions right but but whatever is the natural reflection of that for you is what it is so any physical experience you have is nothing but a reflection of the artist the the painting is the painters the music is the musicians there's no other way around it Right. So now what you have to do is you say, OK, well, you can approach it two ways. You can say, what is it about what is it about if there's something physically that's happened I don't like? And if it's something that's 
I feel is maybe out of my control or is happening against my will. What is it that I'm that I feel that way in my mind about? Is it my relationships? Is it my self-concept? Is it my money? What, what there's an idea. Every physical thing that's done is an expression of an idea. That's why when I ask. Uh, Monique to describe Delaware, even though she knows of it, she can't describe it because she doesn't have the experience. She doesn't have the idea. So she can't express it. She hasn't, she doesn't have any relationship to it. She can't express it. So our bodies, our money, our health cannot be expressed without an idea. And it's only expressed according to an idea. So anything that's happening in our physical world is an expression of an idea. If we want to change the physical world, we have to change the idea. Because the only reason this thing is showing up in our world is because of an idea. And the only way it will remain is if we keep it. The only way it will dissolve or go away is if we stop. An idea could be something you like. An idea could be something you don't like. An idea is I'm broke. An idea is also a dream. It's an idea. A dream, like I have a dream to be this. It's an idea. It's something that you can see that you would like or something that you see that you don't like. They're both things that are going on in your mind. Vision always precedes sight. Sight is physical. Vision is not. Vision is God mind. That's why it says in the book, uh, for a lack of vision, my people perish. For a lack of vision. For lack of the inability, for lack, for the lack of the ability to see yourself or see something the way you want, you perish, you die, you remain as you are. For a lack of vision, for the for the lack of the imagination, for the lack of the idea, for the lack of the gene, meaning the beginning of something that creates the thing that you call reality or physically real. So anytime you want to change anything physical, whether it is your body, what it looks like, how it feels, how it operates, how it functions, whether it's your money, what it looks like, how it feels, how it operates, how it functions, whether it's your relationships, whether it's your job, whether it's your business, all of those things, the common denominator are, they're physical. The common denominator and what created all those things is one thing, your mind, your imagining, what you are imagining and believing to be real and true. Our human mind says, well, since I'm thinking this, I'll probably get that. But your God mind doesn't think like that. It says, this is what you're thinking. I will find the perfect physical expression of that. That's why a lot of times we're, we're unable to tie our thought life to our physical life. I didn't think that. I wasn't thinking that. No, you weren't thinking about cancer. But you were thinking about something that was so upsetting to you or so bothersome to you, so on your nerves, right? That cancer was the best expression of that for you. For someone else, it may be high blood pressure. For someone else, it may be diabetes. For someone else, it may be a car accident. For someone else, it's whatever that is to you, your, your, your subconscious mind, your God mind, your higher mind knows what is the physical thing to reflect back. That's why it says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. I am the Lord God, and there is no other. No one can save you out of my hand. We were talking about this earlier on the call as well, uh, around 630, 640 hour when Alberta and I were talking. And one of the other things we were talking about is how as you go on this path, you will start to inevitably, you, have, well, you will have no choice if you, are, if you are walking down this path. You have no choice but to realize people don't matter the way you think they do. They don't matter the way you think they did because people are just physical, just like winds and waves. So in the book, when Jesus was in the boat and the winds and the waves got high and the other people in the boat said, we're surely going to die. And Jesus says, stop the cap. Like we talked about, peace be still. The winds and waves are nothing but physical things in the world. But to Jesus, those physical things had no dominion. No, peace be still. Because that doesn't apply to me. I am. This is not about me. I just happen to be around. But this is not, I'm not going to let this affect me. But I don't let this affect me according to who I am. The other people in the boat saw themselves much differently. And as a result of seeing themselves much differently, the winds and waves had a different perspective to them. They saw it differently. They're like, we are sure, we're surely going to die. This person had to be woken up in the boat. They were asleep and they're going to, he was asleep, they're going to die. They're in the same boat. 
circumstances, winds and waves re represent circumstances. And everybody in circumstances in life don't have to look the same to you, don't have to feel the same to you, don't have to affect you the same way that they affect someone else. They don't. They don't. But they affect you according to who you are. Jesus was the highest mind that said, I made everything. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, a cattle on a thousand hills. And I give to all whom I please. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No harm shall come nigh my dwelling. I'm the one walking on the water. How is the water going to drown me? I'm the cat on top of it. <laughs> and even if I didn't want to, anybody want some wine? I can make these waves that too, really, if you want to get it. It's, Jesus was the magician. Everybody else is the crowd saying, ooh, ah, or can you help me? Show me how to do that. That, that mind is in you. What does it say? Let that mind that's in Christ be also in you. That mind is already in you. You just have to let it. You have to let it live, let it be. You don't have to make up anything. Everything is already here. Everything you could ever want or be or do or have is already available. Is anybody getting water from the moon? No. Anybody getting some fresh air from Saturn? <laughs> is anybody getting this, you know, I got some, you know, uh, you know, I got some curtains from Mars. Yeah, I got to get it. I went up over there and picked some curtains up from Mars and I brought it back to the crib and I didn't put them up. Everything you're doing is here. Everything, every bit of experience you have is here. Everything you could ever want is already here. So when we talk about be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, you change your life by changing your mind. When you get a different perspective, you will see things you never saw because when you get a different perspective, you have moved. So you're now looking at something from a different angle, from higher, lower, in the front, in the back, across the street, down the street. right? You're not creating anything. What you call creation is really awareness. You become aware that something already exists, but in the state of mind you are in, it won't. It doesn't. I was talking to my brother this morning, one of my brothers this morning, and I said to him, I said, if he went to Howard, and so, and we're from Southern California. So I said, Marcus, what if you went to Howard online? Would you have had would you have had the same Howard experience as you did going there? No. I said, what if you decorated your room though and it was just all Howard? What if you got you a sweater and everything? And you sat there online, you had the hat, scarf, beanie, glasses, draw, socks, you had everything, Howard. We're gonna paint the walls, we're gonna put the bison on the, I mean, we're gonna do it. Right? Would you have had the same experience? And he said, no. I said, why not? He said, well, because I wasn't there. Right. So no matter how much you think of something, if you're unwilling to move where Howard is in D.C., if you have to stay in Southern California and you're not willing to move to D.C., how do you ever experience Howard? How do you ever have that experience to know what the campus is like, to know what it smells like, to know what's this and that? How do you ever do that if you're unwilling to move? You can't do that from there. You can't, you cannot remain in the state of poverty in your mind and think you're going to walk by wealth. Howard is not in LA. I've been all around it. It ain't, it ain't gonna, it ain't gonna work, right? There is right proximity, osmosis, living through someone else, going online. That ain't Howard. You got to go to Howard. You have to be at Howard in order to know what that's like. You can't express without the experience. You can't talk about it, feel about it, breathe it, smell it, touch it. You can't. Well, you can't express health. You can't express wealth. You can't express any physical, you can't express any physical reflection of a state of mind you are unwilling or do not occupy. Howard is not in LA. It's just not, it's not personal. It's not there for anybody. Right. So the law of mind is no respecter of persons. Howard is no respecter of persons. You want to come here. You got to come here. Right. This is my best English. You want to come here. You got to come here. You want to be wealthy. You got to come here. You can't stay where you are. Wealth don't live there. Wealth doesn't think like that. Wealth doesn't act like that. Wealth doesn't talk like that. Wealth doesn't move like that. Health doesn't move like that. Peace doesn't move like that. Success doesn't move like that. But we want to transform our lives without renewing our mind. We want to be able to think the same and get a different outcome. That is insanity, as we all know.
But yet what's more insane about it is we keep trying. Because guess what? You don't understand how I feel. You just don't really know what I'm thinking. You don't understand me. You're judging me. You don't understand what's happening here. Uh, everybody tells me what is wrong. No, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm a good person. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't think I wasn't doing that. Well, then how did you get what you got? It's according to your faith, be it unto you. It's not according to my faith. What does it say? Whatever you desire, when you pray, believe you have received it and you will. Is there a they in there, a them in there, he, she, it? There is nothing but you. There's nothing but you. And that's what I meant when I said, as you start going along this journey, you'll, people will, people, circumstances will matter less to you because you'll realize they either have nothing to do with you or they can't affect you. As long as you don't change your mind, the outcome will remain the same. Well, if you don't change your mind about who you are, your outcome is going to remain the same. So you better know who you are and you better like it. And if you don't know who you are, you better figure it out. And if you don't like what you got, it's because you don't know who you are and you better figure that out to help change what you don't like. Otherwise, you're going to keep getting what you get because you're getting what you are. Not what you want, not what you like, not what you hope, not what you wish. You're getting what you are. When you dress up in a beautiful dress, you're not sitting there. You don't go to the mirror and be like, I can't believe these aren't overalls on. <laughs> right? You don't look in the mirror and you're surprised that you're not wearing what you thought you had on. The mirror is doing nothing but reflecting what you dressed yourself as. Man. You are emotionally dressing yourself. And because we have been thinking our whole lives, we don't realize what we're thinking. Because you don't have to get a degree to do it. You don't have to go to a class to do it. You just get to think freely. But some people are so free, they're like the people on the, on the uh, they're like a drunk driver. They're like so per some, per some people so free on the freeway, they in everybody's lane. Some people are so free when they drive and they're running all the lights and the stop signs. They're so free that they're a danger to themselves and everyone around them. Right? So a lot of the things we allow is because we don't really know who we are. We allow things we should never allow, but we allow them because we don't know who we are. We don't really know. Not really. Because if you knew who you were, you wouldn't act like that. You wouldn't say that. You wouldn't hold on for dear life to high blood pressure. You wouldn't try to manage it. You wouldn't try to manage debt. You wouldn't try to manage cancer. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. Would God do that? The old school, old school God that we all probably grew up with. Would God do that? You know, I got this cancer, but I'm fighting it off. I'm beating it. I'm fighting it off me. What? Get it off you. Now, off, out. Do you let somebody come in your house? Well, you know, I'm trying to get them out. Like Martin, throw they out. <laughs> throw them out. Just like Martin, get out. This is my house, get out. You have no right to be here. This is your life. Nothing has a right to be here except or unless you allow it. That's, this is how this is going. This is how this works. That's what I say. That's why I say when I said, as you go down this line, as you start rising in mind, the physical world will matter less because you know it can't affect you. It can't hurt you. And it's only it can only be what you are. So then you stop worrying about it and you start paying attention to you. And you say, this physical world will be perfect if I become perfect. So I'm going to focus on my perfection. I'm going to become acquainted with the perfection that is in me called God call the highest level of thinking, call the universe, infinite intelligence, whatever you want to call it. Leroy, Lenny, Shaniqua, right? Teslianis, you can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. It works the same. What it, that the power in you is what people call God or any other thing. And it has the ability to do anything that you will come into agreement with. It's waiting. It's your genie, but it's unlimited wishes. You can't ask for enough. Just like you can't go to the ocean and drink all the water. You can't sit there all day and count all the stars. You can't breathe real hard and take up all the oxygen. You can't, you can't outdo God. You can't beat God giving or getting. Your awareness is that. Whatever you're aware of, you can have. There's nothing too big. Whatever you're aware of, you can have. There's nothing too dastardly. You want to think poor? We'll get you real right. You want to think sick? 
We got it. What, what you want? Autoimmune? What you want? An actual, just regular disease? What you, what you want? I got you. I got you. That's what Emile Coué was talking about, the French pharmacist, when he with the one that coined, every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. He was a pharmacist and he realized, he said, I realized that people's greatest strides came when they changed how they saw themselves. He realized the pharmacy was really inside. You have your own internal chemistry set and it is being governed by your thoughts, by the pharmacist. When you go to the pharmacy, do they let you pick the medicine? You'd be dead in an hour. Well, guess what? You're operating your own pharmacy and you wonder why you're on the brink of death daily, weekly. Why your finances are on the brink of death daily, weekly, because you don't know what to pick. You're not choosing the right medicine, the right thought for your health. You didn't overdose, underdose, mis misdiagnosed. And you wonder why you staggering, hurting, sick, broke, poor, sad, mad, because you're not applying the right thought, the right medicine. You didn't apply this with food. Now your stomach hurt. You didn't apply. You stopped the medication too early. Now the rash came back. We are our own. We are the pharmacists of our lives. Everything is internal, ready to go. But we have to know what to pick and how to use it. But how do we know that if we don't even know where the pharmacist? How do we know that if we don't even know who we are? We don't even know who we are, and we on social media telling everybody who we are. How do you do that? You don't even know who you are, and you on social media telling everybody who you are. How do, you, how do you do that? How do you know nothing about yourself and tell everything, tell everybody everything about yourself? Tell everybody all your business and you don't know yourself. Like I said, if you did, you wouldn't say that. You wouldn't think like that. You wouldn't believe that. You wouldn't hold on to that. You wouldn't have that. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't allow somebody to do it. Not to you, with you, or around you. You wouldn't, you wouldn't do that. You're like, that, that mindset, I'm not drowning in the boat with you fools. Hey man, I, I'm here, not not today. The cat on the water, what did you say? Right, the cat that's walking on the water ain't going to get drowned by it. The cat that can turn water into wine is not going to get drowned by it. Right? But I'm here now, so peace be still. These other cats over here, you're welcome. I'm not going down with them. I know better, because I, I know who I am. I'm not going down with them. So I'm not going to agree. With the, that's why a lot of times people... What I what I'm teaching people the first couple of weeks, a lot of times they're like, because I'm not gonna drown in the boat with you because that's what you believe. I'm not gonna agree with you because that's what you really think. Well, it's hard to make money. Well, you know you have to have all these things. Okay, good. That's wonderful. That's not true, but I understand why you're I ain't mad at you, but that's not correct. I'm not gonna drown in the boat with you because you don't know better. My job is to keep me safe. And if you're willing to listen, I can keep you safe. Nobody in the boat drowned in the story, did they? No, but it was because the one person who said, I'm not drowning because I know who I am, saved everybody who didn't know who they are. So why should he agree with them? Why should I agree with you and you don't know what you're talking about? You just have opinions, feelings, emotions, traditions, customs, history. It's always been this way. This is absolutely not. I don't care about any of those things. The winds and the waves are not going to get me. Now, if you want me to agree with you that they're going to get you, then we can talk about it, but they're not going to get me. Why would I agree with you and you about to drown? Why don't you agree with me and I'm about to walk out or walk on top of it? Why would I agree with you? Right? What are you pledging your allegiance to? What are you agreeing to? What are you agreeing? Are you agreeing to that? Really? Are you agreeing that money's hard to get? Are you agreeing that it's too hard? Are you agreeing that it's this? Are you agreeing that it's that? Right? You have to figure out what you're pledging your allegiance to and make sure it's to the country of your desire. Make sure it has all the rights and benefits that are good for you and good to you. Because you are going to be governed by the laws of that country, by the laws of that state of mind that you're occupying. Right? So that is... That is what it is. It's very simple. You now become the person who isn't that. You now become the person who is this. I am now this person. I've moved. I want to go to Howard, so I'm moving. I got to move to Washington, D.C. I can't stay where I am and think I'm going to get an experience of Howard. I can't stay sick and think I'm going to get the experience of health. 
Doesn't matter whether I rationalize it, whether I go to school online, whether I put the sweater on, you ain't in DC. You're not touching the street. You're not smelling the air. You're not seeing all those things, Northwest, Southeast. You're not seeing all those places I saw when my brother was out there and I went to visit, right? Just because you can see a state, if you don't occupy it, you will not get any benefit from it. Right? Your mind is in a state every moment of every day. And you have to be aware of where you're putting it because that is all you have access to is where you are. You are living from where you are in mind, physically expressing that. All right. All right. So just FYI, I'm going to paraphrase a little, but um, basically Sparkle Bailey had, you know, her past told her um, with her past mind, but today she realized she can cut ties with um, seizures and already attracting healthy loved ones all around her because that was not the same in the past. I told her to tell it by Felicia. Mm -hmm. Like I said, you can't go to Howard from Los Angeles. You either in Howard or you're in Los Angeles. You're either healthy or you're not, but you're in one of those states at all times. And the only free will you have is the ability to choose which state you occupy. You don't have that. Your free will is not to stay in the state that you don't want and think you're going to get things you do want. You can't stay in the state of poverty and think wealth is going to come up in any way, shape or, shape or form. It doesn't exist. I can't walk around Southern California and somehow wind up looking at the White House. It doesn't matter. I'm a good person, bad person. Doesn't, it has nothing to do with that. It doesn't exist in that state. Just like we're all in physical states of body, living in physical places, we are in, we are in mental states of mind. And that mental state of mind is an environment through which and in which and with which things are possible and other things are not. Things exist here and other things do not. The only freedom you have is to choose which state of mind you occupy. And based on the state of mind you occupy, it is going to have a physical expression in your world. Just like when you're in New Jersey or when you're in uh, all those, a lot of the East Coast places that you guys are in and some of the Southern places that you guys are in, there's some places there's snow, some places there isn't. Some places there's warmer weather, some places wherever your environment that you're in, that's what you're going to experience. You don't get to govern that. You only get to choose whether you want to be a part of it. You don't get to govern outcomes. You only get to choose the cause that governs the outcome. If you know you don't like that end result, don't be the cause of that. Don't choose that thought. Don't live there. Don't move there. Don't stay there. Right? Don't stay there. So make sure that you move to a place that is where you want to live. Move to a place that is how you want to live. Move to the place in your body. Move to the place in your money. Move to the place in your relationships. They're all states of mind that are expressed physically. Your body is not creative. It's created. Art is not creative. It's created. Music is not creative. It's created. All physical things are not creative. They are created. And they are created by the states of mind that you occupy, by the choices that you choose to think, the thoughts that you choose to think, the thoughts you feel, the thoughts you believe. That is, that is a state of mind. And from there and in there, that is where you live. That's where all your experiences are going to be. All right. What does it take? What does it take to keep? What does it take to keep a baby alive? You've had a baby. What does it take to keep it alive? Food. Okay. Food. Love. Okay. An adult. You need you need you need someone with experience to take care of the child. Experience. Shelter. 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 All right, that's good enough. So what happens? This is this is the baby. What happens? if you deny it any of these things? What happens Ooh, if it's not getting these things from you? Say it again. Say it again. Say it again. 
<laughs> I said failure no, it, to thrive. Okay, so it fails to thrive. Okay, what else? Traumas. Okay. Um, let me accept that. Okay, I, I agree with that. I mean, I don't know why we're dancing around it. But yeah, nobody wants to say it, but everybody does the thing that leads up to it. Okay, so... And then how, when you say food, love, experience, shelter, how often? Like once a week? Every two hours. F five minutes, every two hours? Feed a baby? Are you sure? Is this what you, is this really, you know how, is this really what you want to do? Are you asking me how yeah, often no. the baby? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Okay, we said daily. You said, Veronica, what'd you say? Every two hours. Oh, look, look. Boy, it got low. She now she's like, well, uh, is it every two hours? I fed like my that. baby. Newborn, newborn, every two hours. That's right. Every two hours. Yep. Yeah, okay. You know. Okay. I remember, man. I was when I when I had my daughter years and years ago. I got up to to make a bottle, and I was standing under the sink with my finger out, you know, waiting for the water to get warm, and I I couldn't feel my legs, and I was so sleepy that my finger was under the tap, waiting for the water to get warm, and finally I said. What is happening? And the thing was on cold. <laughs> I was so tired, I didn't realize the thing was on cold. And until I literally cursed myself and said, what is happening? Right? Yeah, the thing was on cold. I'd have been standing there all, all morning. Right? So daily, and what happened? Every two hours, boy, it'll make you crazy. Right? Make you feel crazy. Two hours. Okay. So we said, so you guys, you guys know this was a setup. You guys did know that. Yeah. Okay, so what is the difference then between your baby and your desire or your dreams? What is the difference? Nada. Anyone, everyone that can speak from where they are? We usually put more emphasis on the baby because we recognize it as a life. We don't give that same type of emphasis. There is no difference. Desires. Yeah, did you see how somebody just tried to romanticize that? There is There's no, no difference. difference. There's no difference at all. And, the, and if you were to say a difference, you know what the difference is? Is that the desire and the dream is yours and the baby and the baby is not, is, is yours, but it's not you. So you're able to love it more than you love yourself. So you take better care of a baby than you take care of your own dreams and desires. And that's why your baby lives and your dreams die. Your dreams need every single thing. Food. What is food? Thought. What is love? The emotion you put into it. The thought about it. What is experience? Repetition. What is shelter? Protection. I'm not going to allow everybody to talk to me about it. Tell me what I can or can't be. I'm going to guard it. Right? That's all these things are what you do with your desire and your dream. And what it, and do and you do them daily. You do them every two hours. So then if you have to, if you say some affirmations every two hours, oh, that's too much. I can't do all that. I'm stressed out. That's a lot of energy. You know what I mean? We have lives to live here. We have, oh yeah, everybody tell you all kind of stuff. But does that baby care about your life? Does it care about you being tired? I know I couldn't feel my legs and my hand was under that water and, and my daughter was still in the bed waiting like, what are we doing? <laughs> she didn't volunteer to help. She didn't come out and say, hey, can I, can I get something for you? What's going on? Right? So then I still had something to do because I'm in charge of it. It's not in charge of me. I'm here to support it. It can't support me. It's only a reflection of me. Setup is real. And so every desire and dream you have, do you do you feed it mm. daily every two hours? Do you love it every two hours? Do you love it so much emotionally and just the thought about it makes you do it daily, makes you do it every two hours? Do you experience it enough? Do you repeat it in your mind? I am this, I am this, this is who I am, this is how things go for me. Does anybody, everybody do that? Does everybody give it shelter? You protect it from your own negative thinking, from your own history, from everybody telling you what you can do, from the world saying you can't do that, from tradition, from custom, from let's keep it real. Do you keep it safe from 100? Some of you need to let 100 go. Do you, you need to keep it safe from one, you need to stop keeping it 100. Right? You need to keep it safe from 100. 
Your desire and your dream require every bit of that just like your baby does. It's yours to raise. It is yours to, to become, to make reality. It's yours, what do you say, experience. You need a, you need some maturity. This baby is M, meaning separate from, mature. It is immature. You are the adult. You are mature. You're supposed to be mature. So you're the one that's supposed to be feeding your dream every two hours daily. You're the one that's supposed to be protecting it, repeating it over and over, emotionalizing it, meaning not just feelings, but the feeling. Actually be like, man, that's me. I am this. I do have this. I am like this. When your baby's crying, that doesn't make it a bad thing. You just, it's just realizing it needs your attention. When you have a doubt, it's not a bad thing. It just needs your attention. You need to change it, change the diaper, right? Pick it up and hold it, rub it, talk to it. Jesus Christ, if you guys would take and love your desires as much as you love your kids, you'd be, you'd be more famous than me. I just thought I'd throw that in, right? You guys would be everything you want. You'd be walking on the water, turning water into wine. You would be telling the winds and waves, child, please, not today. If you loved your dreams and your desires, if you loved yourself as much as you try to love everyone else, you'd be okay. You wouldn't have no, you wouldn't have any problems. But the problem is you don't. And, and how do you love a self? You don't know. But when you're running around feeding everybody, giving everybody food, when everybody is your baby, your significant other is your baby, your baby is your baby, your car is your baby, your group is your baby, your church is your baby, your job is your baby, your friends are your baby, everybody's your baby. Everybody's getting all these things from you and you don't have anything for yourself. And you apply all these things, which is why all these things are alive in your world. And yet your dreams and desires are deader than Marvin Gaye and Tupac and B. They dead. They all the way dead. Dead and stanking. They graveyard dead. Right? And yet you wonder why you can't get anything. When you feed your baby daily and you feed those things, when you feed your baby every two hours, what is that? Nurturing. What is that? Where are we? We're in this class. When you feed your baby every two hours, what is that? What is that a, another version of? Like reminders, affirmations. Affirmations. It's an affirmation. You are affirming you're still on the case. You're still on the job. You're still the parent. It's still your duty. It's an affirmation. Anybody have a problem doing these every two hours? But yet, if you have to do some affirmations every two hours and all of a sudden it's this, and you know, we don't, do we really need to do this? No, you don't. You don't need to feed your baby either, but how's it going to live without your help? Are you, are you, are you like that, that you don't need to do it? Is your life clicking and clacking and cracking like that, that you don't think you need repetition? Now, let's be clear about something. Affirmations really, if in, in the way, there's a couple different ways to use them for a couple different reasons. But one of the things affirmations are is a thing that you will grow out of. They're like training wheels in some cases. They're things that help you get onto the bike. They're things that help you get onto your dream. There are things that help you keep this, keep it, keep it stable while you're learning. I am this thing. I am this thing. I am this thing. You just say it over and over to yourself, verbally in your mind. You under your breath. You you get a get a little Parrot app, like on the at the uh, iPhone store, or the App Store. A little there's a little app called Parrot. You can put your voice on there, and it'll loop it over and over until you stop it. You need to affirm. You need to feed your baby more often. You need to feed your dream more often. You need to think not just about it, think as it. I am this thing. We Most of us have had kids on here. When you first took your child home and they started crying, what were they saying? Does anybody know? Does anybody know what language that is and what they were saying? I know I didn't. We get to understand as a like what their cries are about. Correct. From doing what? Spending the time. Correct. How much time do we spend with our dream? How much time do we spend with our desire? How much time do we spend living in the end saying, I am this thing? 
How do we get to know? How do we get to know what this thing is? Just like we get to know our baby. We don't spend any time with it. We do it every other day. We do it, uh, uh, oh man, shoot, I, uh, your baby would have been dead. You didn't let the baby in the car. You didn't let the baby at the mall. You didn't let the baby everywhere, at the park. You didn't let your dreams everywhere with everyone. You didn't let everybody watch your baby. Anybody think that's a good idea? So why do you think telling everybody your business, your dreams and your desires is a good idea? And then mad that they don't co-sign on it and agree. Pump you up, motivate you, do three jump squats and a split. Why do, Why would you, Why if you would not give your baby to anyone and everyone, why are you giving your dreams to anyone and everyone? Why do you think everyone is qualified to hear what you think? Can they help? Have you looked at your life and say, if I tell this person this, I'm going to be better off for it. Have you ever thought about that? Wouldn't you think about that before you dropped your baby off? Well, then why are you dropping your dreams off to everybody? Why are you telling everybody everything? They're not equipped or capable to handle that. They're not qualified to handle it. Just like your little cousin. You wouldn't give me your baby. Like, I uh, love you, brother, but no. No, you can't babysit. I know you want to make a little extra cash. Let me just go ahead and give you, I'll give you $5, but we can't leave. No, we can't do that. Right? It's the same thing. Your baby needs, your dream, your desires need your attention. It needs your thinking, thinking as it. I am this thing. I, I make $10,000 in my business. I make $10,000 a week. 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 You feed your baby every two hours, then you can say this every two hours. How about that? You feed your baby daily, you can say this daily. Until your baby grows up. Until your dream becomes hardened into fact. Until you keep saying it, you keep feeding your baby until they grow up to do it themselves. You keep feeding your dream, meaning you keep assuming you are something until it hardens into your fact, into fact in your world, till it becomes what is in your account weekly. Not 800, not 8,000. You keep going until it's 10,000 or more. Not 9,600, not 9,800, not 99, 99, 99, 99, 10,000 or more. You keep feeding it until it can feed itself. Then you can stop. Because now it can run itself. It's on autopilot. I tell everybody, the older my daughter gets, the more I like it. The more I like it. Oh, man, you know how hard it is when you're a dad and you're out there uh, at Whole Foods and your daughter tells you, you have to, she has to go to the bathroom? And you're like, oh, God. I mean, my blood pressure spiked. I got an attitude. I was mad and everything. What do you mean you have to go to the bathroom? What is your problem? You can't hold it for six more hours in a row? What's the problem? Yeah, because you're sitting there thinking, good Lord, where am I going to go? Okay, I can't go in the women's bathroom because I'm a guy. She can't go by herself yet because she's only three. And then, and I ain't buying no more diapers. Three, after that, at a certain age, you out. So she's so she got to go to the bathroom and she's doing a good job telling me. And if I go in the guy's bathroom, now the girl, my daughter's going to see God knows what. And it's going to look like God knows what. Oh, man, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. That could have put me on medication. Right, just that alone. It was a good day until she said, Daddy, I have to use the bathroom. I mean, I got an attitude where, like she cursed me. She might as well have said, F you. She might as well slap me in my face. That's how, that's how offended and upset I was immediately. Right? And I'm like, oh, God, what are we going to do here? Jesus, what are we going to do? Right? So she's saying all that to say that your, your baby, your dream needs your help. It doesn't need it to be it, but it needs it to become full in your in, in your world, to mature. It already is what it is. You're not making toes, elbows, eyes. You're not making nothing. All you're doing is incubating it. All you're doing is providing an environment for it to grow and protecting it from things that would prevent that and giving it the, the, the fuel it needs to develop itself. But it is self-developed. It has everything inside and you're using what it has inside to help it. You can read to your child. You can't read for them. Anybody got MB like behind their child's eyes and read for them? Anybody do that? 
You can't, you can only read to them, but they have to read for themselves. So you read to them over and over so they learn, you activate the ability they already have within it. Your dream, your desire already has all the mechanisms, all the power, all the ability within it to actualize itself. It doesn't need your help. It just needs your permission, just your support. Just don't mess it up. Just do your part. Just do your part. That's what your dream needs. It needs your thought. You thinking as the person who has that or is that or is doing that. You thinking as that, your child has a name, your thought has an end, name your end. I am wealthy. I'm not going to be, I'm not hoping to be, I'm not with hard work and who I know and grinding and a thousand social media posts, then I'll be. No, I am now. I am now. And you think like that. That is your baby. You call the baby a name. You call your, your thought has an end. You emotionalize that. I don't mean crying and passing out and fainting. I'm saying you have a connection to that, a bond to it, just like you do your baby. It's the same thing, but it needs the same daily two hours. It needs the daily. It needs every two hours. It may be every 30 minutes for you, whatever it is. It needs what it needs. And if you want it to grow up and mature and you're the parent and you so-called love it or want it or want to have a dream or desire, then you're going to do that. But as, as you realize, you get better at it. You start realizing what it needs. You start being able to identify cries. You say, oh, she's hungry. Oh, he's, he's, he's tired. Oh, he has gas. Oh, he wants me to pick him up. Oh, she wants. You start to identify why they still ain't speaking English. But all of a sudden, you start to just get it from the, from the relationship. When you have a relationship with that thought, when you say, I am this thing, I am this thing, I am this thing, I am, I'm, I have, or I do. When you do that, you start to have a relationship with it. You start to understand it. It starts to make sense to you. You start to say, yeah, I really am that thing. You wake up one day, you're like, yeah, no, nah, I really am it. I, I, I'm actually it. And once that happens, it's over. It's over. It's over. You know what? I'm going to crack the window. I'm going to start throwing the marker out the window. That's what I'm going to start doing. Yeah, I decided, right? All right. Does does everybody understand that? Yes. Chapter, but put a one in the chat. And people say, I I don't she understand. That's it. That's it. Put a one in the chat. <laughs> All right. All right. That's for engagement. Hey, that's wonderful. All right. All right. Okay, okay, okay. What do I want to do next? Um, all right. We, you know, we're, we're all, we, we've all been young and most of us, I'm sure, if not all of us, have learned to ride a bike, right? And I'm sure all of us, if not most of us, have taught someone else how to do it. So either we have fallen off a bike or we've, and teaching someone, somebody else falls off a bike. Well, falling, falling, is a, in a, in a falling, right? The immature mind, the, un, the, the lack of understanding about how to do something is, okay, that could be your learning. So you're around a mature mind that's teaching you how to do that, or you're maturing your mind by doing that. So when, if you happen to fall off your bike, when you're learning, if you happen to fall off your bike, now what? What happens next? What now? Get back on. Okay. What is that based on? I don't know. Okay. Anybody else? You get back on. What is that based on? Usually being encouraged to keep trying. What if you're by yourself? Determination. Which is self-encouragement. So then what determines when you get back on? You do. You. Who is you? I am wants to continue I am. riding. Okay. Does any, okay. But do you, so then. Okay, so you, whoever you think that is, whoever I am is believing itself to be, well, then, so 
however long you stay on the ground crying or upset or quitting is based on I am, meaning what is believing itself to be. So then let's ask it another way then. So how long are we going to keep crying about the same stuff? How long are we going to stay off the bike on the ground crying and whining? How long are we going to keep saying we're not what we want? We're not what we want. We don't have what we want. We can't get what we want. How come I don't have what I want? Where is it? How come this isn't work? How long are we going to stay on the ground of life crying that we fell off the bike? Until we mature or get tired. Okay. So when are then, so which one of those? So, okay. Do we mature or we get tired? Well, people are, people are tired of a lot of things. Don't they tell you? And they still do the same things. Don't they? I'm tired of being That's broke. You see them the next day doing the same thing. So when are you going to get up? Like, when are you going to get up? When is enough enough? When are you going to get up? When Going back to your baby analogy, mm -hmm. when the diaper rash is on fire, you've mm -hmm. got to get up because you've got to put on something to soothe that burn. Mm -hmm. So then you change one of two ways, through pain or wisdom. Now, which one do you think of these, which one of these do you think are better to learn from? Wisdom. Wisdom. Oh yeah, but you gotta go through some things. You just know you gotta go through some things to understand the things that you go through because those things that you go through are then things and then things are through what you go and then things is through. And they through the things that you're going through the things. Oh yeah, oh everybody will tell you boy, oh everybody, we're pledging allegiance again. But this time we're gonna pledge allegiance to pain, things, you have to learn on your, learn yourself, learn on your own. Oh, you got it. I mean, you got things. You got to go through some things in order to get places. Because without struggle, there is no progress. And oh, yeah, you got all of it. But on the other side, this side said, my yoke is easy and my burden's light. This side says you have the victory in all things. This side says you're more than a conqueror. This side, this side says uh, all things are possible to the mind who believes, to him who believes, human, mankind. All things are possible to him who believes. So over here, you got to go through some things. You got to go through pain. You got to learn on your own. You got to have your own experience. You are, over here, you can say, well, I can do this and I can have this. And so how long do we think we, like, when are we going to actually get up? When are we going to like get up and move on? When are we going to grow up? And so we can move up and move on. Like, when is, when is your money going to change? When is your health going to change? When are your relationships going to change? When is when is your awareness of who you are and what you can be and what you can do and what you can have? When is that going to change to the point where it affects your world? I don't care nothing about your church outfit, your nice hat. I don't care nothing about uh, that you're in the honorary baking club. I don't care about I don't care about anything you do. I only care about the outcome of what you do. Is it working? Is that is that really is that working for you? I don't care what you say. I care what you know. And I don't care what you know. I only care what it produces. I know what you know by what you produce. I can argue all day, but when that apple comes on that tree, I know it's an apple tree. The orange is out of the question. We've been on the ground. We're on the ground too long, too often. We don't have to fall that many times. And you don't have to cry just because you fall. It's one of the first things I taught my daughter. Listen. You have a right to cry about anything that makes you feel that way, but make sure it does. Think about it first. It just because you fall doesn't mean you have to cry. Just because you something you hit something or something hits you doesn't mean you have to cry. What is that really the appropriate emotion that you want? That's that's the appropriate expression of this experience. It may not be. Don't just do things by default. Then you're out of control. You don't have to yell because somebody yelled. You have to cry because you fell off a bike. If you fell off the bike and it hurts that bad, man, cry like you some kind of opera singer. Go all the way into it. Put your back into it. I mean, get your eyes wide and your mouth open and go ahead and do the thing. But if you, if you can just dust yourself off and keep pushing, get on the bike. Because even though you may be justified in crying, you're sitting on the curb crying when you could be on the bike riding. Is the crying better than the riding? Make sure the crying is better than the writing. 
If you're suffering, make sure the suffering is so good that you just can't put it down for a minute. Make sure it's actually something better than the alternative. Just not something you do because that's how you respond. Just because you fall off the bike doesn't mean you have to cry. Right? Just because somebody says something crazy to you doesn't mean you have to feel crazy, act crazy, or respond that way. Just because somebody cuts you off doesn't mean you have to give them the bird, get all out of your, get all out of your mind and into your feelings. Doesn't mean you have you are an adult. Most of us on here are pretty much, right? And so that means what does that mean? That means you should have control over yourself, your mind, your thoughts, your feelings. Grow up. This is not some kind of emotional Disneyland where you can just run around thinking anything, feeling anything, saying anything, doing anything like you're some kind of eight-year-old on a sugar high. You are better than that. Expect more for yourself and from yourself. You are God for Christ's sake. Act like it. We're not talking about we don't all have our moments, our minutes, or our days, but don't make them an identity. Don't make a second a minute and a minute an hour, and an hour a day, and a day a week, and a month, a year, how long are you going to sit there wanting something, wishing for something, hoping for something, when you are the power that created that thing that you're wanting, wishing, and hoping for? That's like you being the baker of a cake, and you sitting there looking at it, hoping to eat it. What is your problem? You're the chef. You're the baker. You're in control of everything in your world. You don't have to control the world. You control your world. That's why you have a name. There's not 12 names on your ID or on your birth certificate or on your check. These are all reflections of you. Don't sit down there crying on that ground unless it's better than riding your bike. Don't cry about poverty. Actually, why don't you change your mind and get wealthy? Don't cry about being sick. Change your mind and get healthy. Go after the thing that's more valuable. Hold on to the thing that means more to you. Why would you hold somebody else's baby and put yours down and let them cry? You hold your baby. Let somebody else hold theirs. This is your dream, your desire, your life. You choose how it goes for you, how it goes to you, how it is with you. All is well with you. You have the victory in all things. Everything you set your hand to prospers. All the world means you well and treats you kindly. Everyone and everything is a link in the chain of your good. Every time you use money, it goes out multiplying and comes back multiplied. If it's $5, it spends like 10 and comes back like 20. Why don't you say that? Why don't you pledge allegiance to that? Why don't you pledge allegiance to your success, your undying loyalty and fiefdom to that? Why don't you say, I can't lose. All I do is win. All I get is what I want, how I want it. I always get what I want, effortlessly, easy, and quick. All the world means me well and treats me kindly. Everyone is a link in the chain of my good. Everything and everyone is working for my highest and best good. Be loyal to that. Do that. <laughs> Pledge allegiance to that. Pledge your undying loyalty to that, to your success, to your prosperity, to your abundance, to your health, to your happiness, to the ease of your life. What do you have and how do you have it? I don't want to hear nobody else telling me they got a business while they're complaining about it. Keep one or both to yourself. If you can't keep the second one to yourself, I don't want to hear the first one. Uh, where's my boy at? Yeah, we're into the second pack of muffins. <laughs> We're into the second pack of muffins. I don't want to hear nothing about how, how, how I got here. Well, then stop it. Quit. Otherwise, quit that mind. Quit that thought. Drop it. Ghost it. Pause it. <laughs> Tell it you'll be back and don't show up. Right? But pledge allegiance to your best. Pledge allegiance to your good. Pledge allegiance to your great. Pledge allegiance to your health. Pledge allegiance to the good you have in every area of life. I have a marvelous, successful business doing what I love. Everyone loves what I have to offer. Loves to pay me what I want. Loves to refer others to do the same. Loves to pay me on time and up front. I say that about every client I have. Those are the only ones I have. Because I've created my business and my experience with my business. 
I'm not going to create a business and I have no time for myself and no time for my family, no time for my friends, no peace of mind. I'm always struggling. I don't know if I'm going to make it. Whether well, the economy, oh, the weather, what are, then, then I'm not in control. Everything else is in control now. Right? You decide what you want. Every one of those things I said to myself, I every one of those things that I said to myself the, about my clients, right? They love me, love what I have to offer, love to pay me what I want, love to refer others to do the same, and love to pay me on time or up front. Do you know what all those represent? I'm going to save you some time. Solutions to things that were problems. I came up with a solution for things that were problems, right? I would, I would train somebody or I would teach somebody and... And two weeks later, they still haven't paid me. I didn't like that. But do I want to hear sit here arguing with people or, or shut down my business, doing something I love to do? Or do I have to? No, I'm going to change my life. I'm going to choose something that's going to work for me. So now everyone loves to pay me on time or up front. I don't tell anybody that. I'm telling this class, but I don't tell anybody that to make them change. I change me. I change me. Then I'll talk to myself and I'll imagine people saying to me, oh, can I just pay you now and get it over with? Can I just pay you now for then? Can I just pay you now for then? Can I just pay you now and up front? And I'll say it to myself over and over and over. I, it's according to my faith, be it unto me. I don't need you. You are a reflection of me. You could only come according to my consciousness. So if I don't like you, I'm going to change my consciousness and get you out. If I don't like poverty, I'm going to change my consciousness and get you out. This is my life. It's my rules. This is my game. It's going my way. I'm not creating a game and I'm going to lose it. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Why do you think all of us when we were little, right? Everybody wanted to create the rules. Because you know, if you create the rules, you control the game. If you control the game, you can put it in the way you want it to go. Yeah, well, this is your life. This is your game. You're the creator of the rules. Make them in your favor. Every time I say things to myself all the time, man, my phone is always ringing with requests, referrals, and payments. My phone is always ringing with requests, referrals, and payments. I didn't go out to anybody saying, hey, does anybody want to, does anybody want to be taught? Anybody want to train? Anybody want to? I'm not doing that because I don't want to do that. You can do it. Ain't nothing wrong with it. It's just something wrong with it for me. I'm not doing it. So I've changed my mind. My phone is always ringing with requests, referrals, and payments. I go to sleep making money and wake up making money. I go to sleep with more money than I woke up with, and I wake up with more money than I went to sleep with. Who am I talking to? Me. That's all I need to talk to. I don't need to talk to you but my consciousness will draw all the physical expressions of what I'm telling myself. This is my baby. I named it. I'm not going to have a baby and let you name it. It's my business. I started it. Why do I care? I don't, I'm not going to let you tell me what it is or what it ain't, what it can or can't be. No, I'm not saying you don't listen to humanity, that there's not wisdom in the multitude of counsel. I'm saying you make, you make it counsel. You don't make it gospel. Mm -hmm. You remember that they're having a human experience and they're not God any more than you are. And this is your life. And most of us don't like our lives because everyone else is running it and we're just responsible. We show up to the restaurant, they get to order. We go to the movies, they we, we show up to the movies, we pay, they get to go in, we standing outside. We have a life that we feel responsible for and no authority in. Requests, referrals, and payments. My phone is constantly ringing with requests, referrals, and payments. Always buzzing. The little Zell thing, 53489, whatever that thing is. Yeah, it's on fire. Referrals. Hey, so-and-so told me about your kids. Can we request? Hey, uh, can we go today? Can we go tomorrow? All three of those things. That is an answer to a problem. That is, that is the knowledge to a fear. I can be afraid that it won't happen or I can be aware that it does. But I can't be aware of something I'm not choosing. Choose. Decide. I am choosing this and I've decided this is what it is. I've chosen requests, referrals, and payments. That's what I chose. That's me. You can choose whatever you want to choose. But I, I literally say, like, my phone is almost smoking. That's what I say to myself. I'm just telling you things I say to myself. Right? I'm emotionalizing my experience. Just the way you feel when you're holding your baby. I'm holding my experience. My phone is damn near smoking with requests, referrals, and payments. Right? Do you ever crack yourself up? Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, boy, you a wild boy. I'm glad nobody's around here. Right? And then you get to talking to yourself so, so cold that 
you you get to talk to yourself so cold, you stop at a light and you look at people are looking at you like, and then you try to act like, oh yeah, I'm on the phone. Right? You get lost in it. You get lost in it. But it's your imagination is reality. You're lost in your real world. You are really talking to yourself. That's why it has physical effects. You feel the emotion of it. It starts to it starts to grow and increase. And this is how you create your world. This is how you create your business. This is how you create your health. We're doing it. We're doing it for a thousand different things, but there's only one way to do it. You can do a thousand. There's a thousand. There's a thousand million things you can do, but there's only there's only one way to do it correctly. There's a thousand different things you can think, but there's only one truth. So I'm giving you the truth and I'm giving you the way to think for you to apply it to whatever you want. It's going to work for whatever you want. Body, health, money, friendships, peace, joy, success, how easy, what you have and how you have it. A good business with plenty of time for yourself, plenty of time for your family. Always sold out. People can't get enough of it or you. Whatever you're selling, even if that's yourself. And we talked about a couple weeks ago, you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself through via a good, via a, a product, but you are selling you. You is all you have. You is all you'll ever have. Everything else is what you're using to have your experience. I was talking to my brother again this morning, and he was talking about he works with football players and things like that, uh, doing some training that he started up. And he said, yeah, I, I, I want to get the kids to the park and, and, the, and I want to teach them some things and they need to be doing this and doing that. And I said, listen, man, hold on. I said, everything you want those kids to have is because of how it makes you feel. This is not about them. They benefit from you. They're benefiting from you doing something that makes you feel a certain way. So they benefit from what you're offering. But what you're offering is because of how it makes you feel. So your job is not to control them. Your job is to control you. What type of experience do you want to have? All I got to do is show up to the park. Every time I show up to the park, the kids are always there, already ready. Oh, I go through, I have a bunch of different parks in the city that I go to. Every time I go to a park, people are approaching me for training. You create your own experience. The reason your dreams and desires die is because you give them to people. And when they die, you die. When they disagree, you die. When they don't help, you die. When they don't think it's real, you die. Your dreams die because you give them to other people. And they ain't God. There's only one of those, and that is in you as you. And your dream is for you. It's not for everybody else to believe in, agree with, support, pump you up. You don't play no professional sport. There ain't no cheerleaders around. You have to be your own cheerleader. It doesn't mean other people won't support you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's not necessary for you to get what you want. And I'm saying you can assume that everyone supports you. That's fine, too. You can do whatever you want. But my point is you, you will lose your dream if you give it to somebody else. If you, if you condition their participation upon your success. You succeed because of who you are. Because of who you are, not who they are, who you are. You are success itself or failure if you're not thinking properly. You are success itself. You are wealth itself. You are health itself. You are the actual source of the resource so when you don't have any resources, it's because, or your resources are limited, it's because you as the source is not identifying itself properly. Therefore, you become limited because you identify yourself as a human. And humans have limitations. Like you could think of somewhere right now, you can't get there. But your mind, you can be there. God is unlimited. God is everywhere. Omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent. So wherever you think of, you can be there right in your mind. Your body can't. So if you identify yourself with your body, guess what you are? Limited. And then you wonder why you have limited beliefs. If you are limited, why doesn't why why not have limited beliefs? Isn't that congruent? Doesn't an elephant have elephant beliefs? Doesn't a dog have dog beliefs? And because of the beliefs they have, don't they act the way they act? Well, your limited beliefs are because you're using a limited mind and you're using a limited mind because you have a limited identity and you have a limited identity because you identified yourself incorrectly. Try to get on a plane with no ID. Won't you feel limited? And guess why? Because they have a limited belief about who you are. So you aren't going. Oh. It slipped. It slipped. That doesn't count. That's not a real one. I get a full one. I mean, all the way back arch and everything. I get a full one. That just slipped. That was, a, that was a foul ball. That was a foul ball. That wasn't real. Don't try to take my... No, don't try to take that. That's, I get a real one. Seriously, almost got me upset. You got me upset. It slipped. That was a slip. Right? All right. 
All right. Um, all right. Anybody have any questions on anything I said? No, Coach, you are on a roll. Okay. This is a lifestyle. This is not a cult. This is not an organization. This is not a seminar. This is not a service. This is not something where you all have to come be a part of something and pledge your allegiance to this thing. This is, this is a place where you come to get the tools for you to live daily every two hours, every two seconds, every second, as you truly are, knowing that you are the authority of your life and the physical experience you're having is because of the thoughts that and thoughts and feelings and beliefs that you are entertaining the most often. Your dominant thoughts, the things that you are thinking to yourself, about yourself, about your world, about whatever experience you're having, you have a set of thoughts that you are repeating when people talk about affirming, the only reason they call it affirming is because they are saying something to themselves purposely, purposefully and positively. But you are affirming all the time. When you say I'm broke every day, oh, he gets on my nerves all the time. How come there's always traffic? Those are those are affirmations. But you don't call them affirmations because they're just regular thinking. But regular thinking is negative. That's why you have to call it positive thinking. You have to call it something different than what you're normally doing. When you now have a pot, when you have a thought that's for you, it's positive thinking. When you're thinking well on your behalf repeatedly, it's affirming. When you're thinking negatively against yourself all the time, it's just keeping it 100. When you are talking crazy to yourself, it's just keeping it real and it's okay. It's just thinking. It's just life. It, this just happens. What do you mean it's just life? It just happens. God made life. It didn't just happen. That's who you are. You make life. It don't just happen. It just happens to a fool. It just happens to the devil. It just happens to a doubter. It just happens to the immature, ignorant mind. It doesn't happen to the mature, knowing mind, the wise mind. The wise mind knows it created everything and creates everything. It's experiencing what it is believing and what it is choosing to create. Nothing is self-created. Everything is created by one creator and that's it. And that creator is in you as you. You don't just wake up and see, oh, let me see how the day goes. What do you, what does that mean? If you just see how the day goes, then how's it going to go for you? And who's deciding? But we're grown. We can't forget to throw that in there though. Don't tell me what to do. I'm grown. Um, what do I do now? You just told me don't tell you what to do. You got to pick. You can't be, you can't, <laughs> right? What, what are we talking about here? Right? These are things that we we have to we have to start being more aware of. We have to start being more aware of. Consciousness is the only reality. Consciousness is the only reality. Thought is the only reality. It's the only producer of it. Thought is reality. Physical world is nothing but the expression of thought. It's the copy of reality. It's the receipt. The mind is the purchaser. The mind says, I can afford this or I can't. You don't get a receipt for something you didn't buy. You don't have an expression for something you didn't experience. Everything starts in the mind. That is where everything starts. Your consciousness is just the all being omniscient, omnipotent power. It means it's just, it is just a living awareness that produces all physical things. So from that living awareness, that is all inside of us, each of us individually, what is it we want to use it to produce now? What do you want to produce with this consciousness that you have? Nothing can be produced without consciousness. Saying it easier, no one produces anything unless they're alive. So the first thing you have to do is be alive. You have to have life, right? You have to be alive. You have to have life. Okay, with this, you can now determine what kind. You can determine what kind of life, right? When you live. You can determine how you live. You can determine where you live. You can determine all those things only because you first have life. Then you can determine, right? You can condition it now. What I live like, when I live, how I live, where I live. So you have life and then you have the ability to now condition it and say, okay, with this life, I want to be, I want to do. I want to have. 
And then you get from that, you get an outcome. You get an expression. You get what people call reality. But it's not really. It's the receipt. That's all this is. That's all this is. The expression is nothing but the receipt of experience. Remember what we talked about last night? I mean, uh, last week? You came with nothing. You leave with nothing. All The only thing you really leave with is experience. That's all you leave with is experience. The things are nothing but the physical reflections of your desired experience. That's why you can get something and not like it. Not because the thing is bad, but because it doesn't reflect accurately or congruently, truly, your desired experience. It doesn't make you, that's why it doesn't make you feel a certain way. The feeling is the experience. Because God is invisible. Experience is invisible. You can't see what experience people have. You have a feeling. It's invisible. That's you. You have an expression. That's visible. But that's not you. That is your expression. You are experience itself. That's why you have to have experience to express. You can't express without experience. You can be God without humans. You can't be human without God. There is nobody that is not I am. There's nobody that describes themselves as something else than I am. And whatever language you say it, and whatever, and I am is not just a word or, 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 or words. It is an awareness of being. You are aware of being Karen. You are aware of being Sparkle Bailey. You're aware of being Veronica. You're aware of being Carr. You're aware of being Alberta. Whether you say it or not, you're aware of it. I am is awareness. It is first person, present tense, awareness. You're always aware of being. That is experience. That is alive. That is life. You will always be aware of being. Now you're just aware of being the names that we just said. But that's not who you are. You're being aware of being. You're not aware, meaning you're aware without being aware of being that. The being is just condition. Sickness is just a condition. Wealth is just a condition. You are before you were those things. Otherwise, you could never be those things if you weren't. If you just first were not, you could not be those. Those things are just attachments based on who you're believing yourself to be. And you get to choose not the outcome of who you believe, the outcome of who you choose. My mom says all the time, you can make the choice, but you can't choose the consequence. Yeah, it's true. Because your consequences are an exact replica of the choice. The consequence is the physical thing that matches the non-physical. It's the other side of the coin. It's the yin to the yang, the north to the south, the east to the west. Right? It's duality. It's male-female. It's physical, non-physical. Right? So the choice is the thing that automatically sets in motion the, the consequence or outcome. So this is where you make your move. This is where you decide. This is where you decide. You decide in the realm of a live life experience. As you are alive, as you are life itself, as you are experience itself, you are here to have an experience. You want to increase this. So how do you do that? Well, you come down here physically to do things so that you can increase your experience. You came down here as a what? When did you come? That's when you're born. How did you come? Right? You were born. Where? Where were you born? All those things are governed and dictated by experience, by life, by alive, by consciousness, right? By I am. I am determined all of the, is this, therefore determines this. Determines the what, the when, the where, the how, the who, right? And then the outcome of that is expression, which, you, which is physical. But you cannot describe anything physically or have anything physically without first having the experience. That's why when Monique was trying to describe that, that state she had never been to, you can't do it. So how can you be sick if that's not your experience, if it's not your consciousness, if you're not conscious of being sick? 
conscious of that being a possibility. It's COVID. It's flu season. Oh, well, you know, it's almost 50. And, you know, my grandma and her grandma and her grandma, they started getting diabetes right around this time. You have to have, a, you have, to have an experience in order to have an expression. There's no way around it. We just don't always tie our experience and our expression together properly because we think we didn't think this thought or we thought this thought would mean this outcome when no, this thought meant this outcome. You just weren't aware of it, but you weren't aware of it because you're not aware of who you are. And if you're aware of who you are, you would know, guess what? I can't make that mistake. I can't make that. That's, that's not going to work. You would have never made that decision. You would have never had that thought. You would have never entertained that thought. You'd have never let that ride around in your mind. You'd have never let that sink in to become a belief. You'd have never done it. Right? Ignorance is the cause of all sin. Sin means mistake. A lack of knowledge is the cause of all mistake. Whether you don't know what you're doing or you don't know the outcome of what you're doing. Ignorance is the cause of all sin. Knowledge is the cause of all righteousness. Meaning the right state of mind or the right thought process as you desire to be or as you desire things to be. That is righteousness. That is thinking correctly. That is thinking in your favor. You're always to think in your favor. You're always to think in your favor. Always. Always. Everything is working out for me. Everything I touch turns to gold. Everything, everything and everyone loves me, means me well, treats me kindly as a link in the chain of my good. You're always to think in your favor. Everything is working out for me. Everything is always working out for me. It doesn't matter if you got a flat tire. Everything is working out for me. You say it before it, during it, afterward. Everything is working out for me. Everything is working out for me. You And you ride up to work and, this, and the building's on fire. You're like, damn, I might have been in there if I didn't get this flat tire. It, it's not saying something bad has to happen to you. It's saying that sometimes what we think is bad is just a misunderstanding of perspective. You're always safe, but you always go to work. Well, I got to make sure I keep you safe so you can't go to work today. But I know if this, if this tire don't get flat or if I don't, or if this, this some traffic don't happen, or if, you know, you're, somebody says, oh, can you take me to school? And you're like, all right, fine. I got to keep you safe because you're, you're aware of being safe. Your awareness is everything. It's the only thing. And if you can, can, if you can, if you can cook up your awareness, if you can go into the kitchen of your mind and cook up your desired meals, meaning cook up your own concepts of yourself as a woman, as a man, as a businessman, as a businesswoman, as a business person, as a as a mother, as a father, as a in every area of your life, if you can go in there and cook up a concept of yourself and nurture that concept like you nurture a baby, you'll get the same thing. You'll get the same thing. You will get a mature outcome. You'll take something from immaturity or unfamiliarity, from baby, from new, into adulthood. Where now it is self-driving, self-capable, self-confident, self-aware, self-disciplined, self-respecting, self-reflecting. It will be self-driven. But you raised it to become that. You raise your desires, your dreams to become that by nurturing them, by having a relationship with them, by thinking as them, by thinking from them. You don't look at your baby. That's not holding it. You pick it up. You don't look at your desire. That's not holding it. You pick it up. You become one with it. The two shall become one flesh. You marry your mind to your desire. I am now this. The, there is one flesh. It's not two. I want to be that. That's separation. I wish I could be that. That's separation. That's not marriage. That's not a union. You can't produce anything without it. They have to be one flesh. You have to have one mind. I and my desire are one. We're not two. That's why that mind would always say, I and my father are one. I know my father, whom you call your God. I call him my father because we're one. You call it your God because you're separate. So you think you're different and God is different. So when the winds and the waves came, you just hope God heard you or you hope you're praying or you're just like, well, guess I got cost living. I knew I shouldn't have went out today. Or you can be like that higher mind that says, shoot, I and my father are one and I and my father made, made these waves. Because what did it say? Father, I finished the race. Return to me the glory I had with you before the world was. 
There's a glory in you that's always been there. So for you to say you're broke or you're sick, you are out of your mind. You are literally insane. You are you are so wrong. It's, it's like saying today is Tuesday. I don't even know how more wrong. I don't even know what else you could say that's more wrong than that. It's wrong. It's not correct. It's not true. That's why you'll never benefit from it. It'll never feel good. It'll never be good because it's not the truth. No matter how long you believe a lie, it doesn't make it the truth. And no matter how long it takes you to believe the truth, the truth has always been. What Winston Churchill say, the truth is incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But at the end, it will stand. You are the, you are the light that shines. You are the one that can walk on water. You are the one that can rebuke the winds and the waves and say, poverty, not today. Health, no way. Everything is the way you want it to be. You can turn water into wine. You can turn truth into experience. Everybody else was sitting around waiting for that, for the truth to come, because they didn't have any. You wonder why a lot of people around you are not like you, it's not, or, or, or don't understand certain things. It's not a negative thing. They just aren't thinking these same thoughts. Jesus didn't walk around saying, how come nobody's like me? The cat knew. How can they be like me? They don't think like me. How can they be like me? They think it's God. I call him my father. We're thinking two different things. How can we end up the same? Why am I offended by that? You only, you only are what you are because of what you think. Everyone is what they are because of what they think. If you're thinking different things, you're going to get different outcomes. But love what you find, what you find, love what you are so much you don't care what anybody else is. If you love what you were enough, you wouldn't care. Veronica will tell you in a minute, I don't care at all. Not, like not even a little bit. And it's not, and, I, and there's no hate. I, I, I'm nice to everybody. When I go to the store, I say, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I, I don't, I don't yell. I'm not out here screaming, hitting people, cursing people. I'm not, but I don't care at all what you think or how you feel. Unless you, unless you, unless you on your game. I don't care at all. I want to be what I want to be. I like what I am. I'm always evolving as we always are, but I like what I am, but I work on that. Meaning I constantly condition my awareness to be something that's pleasing to me because, because what I am, I give you. And if you don't like it, then I have no friends, then I have no clients or I have no this or no that. So why would I want to be something against my best interests? Right? So I'm, I'm, I'm on me. I'm with me. Right? So that's why I don't care what you think or what you like. I don't care but I want you to have it if it makes you happy, but I'm not, right? But if you picked which, uh, something about yourself, if you loved yourself that much, you wouldn't care about what everybody else thinks and feels and says. You wouldn't care, right? It's not to say that we don't, yeah, we're not an island unto ourselves. We're not saying we don't need people. That's not what we're saying at all, not at all. We're just simply saying that you, you owe no man anything that will prevent you from making the most of yourself. You're not obligated to be less for everybody else's welfare and benefit. You're not obligated to be something you don't want to be to make everybody else happy and you unhappy, but they want you to make them happy and you unhappy. You, that's, that, it's, it's, a, it's unsustainable. It's a, it's a losing formula. Right? You, sh we should, you, we, I'm always talking to all of us because I'm listening. Believe me, I'm listening. I'm listening. So I'm talking to me too. So when I say you, I mean me, we, all of us, right? But you should be winning every day. You should be winning. You have the victory in all things. It means all things. Your body is all. Your money is all. Your business is all. You have the victory. What does victory look like to you? Does it look like that? You have the victory in all things. Now, if you decide to give it away, that's on you. But you have it. It says you have. It didn't say you had. So every time you read it, Every time you think it, that's present. So how are you losing? When is it okay to lose then? When is it okay to fail? Hard, fast, up, quick, turbo. When you have the victory, you have it. What, 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 is this, what part of this do we not understand? Why are we trying to emotionalize and finesse? Why are you listening to these people? They're, I'm gonna say it this way, they're human just like you. Why are you listening to these people? God says you have the victory in all things and you're going to listen to this fool? You're going to listen to that person who won't even pick up the phone at certain times a day or at night. When you can talk to God 24 hours and God said you have the victory in all things and you over here listening to Leroy telling you, well, 
under these conditions, you have the victory. You might, I can place a call. You didn't gave your victory away to get what? Some kind of discounted tie? No. You have the victory in all things. What does it say? I have not given you the spirit of fear. Everybody's afraid of something. Humans are born with two things, the fear of loud noises and the fear of falling. How can you be born with that if you came from somewhere to be born? Were you afraid before you got here? How does that work? Humans just Humanity just gets at all kinds of stuff. We just make all kinds of stuff up. But you put a couple letters after the name or a white coat on and you start believing all kinds of stuff. Well, I'm going to put a white coat on and tell you I'm... I'm some. I'm a, I'm gonna figure out something crazy. How about that? I'm gonna put a white coat on and just start talking all kind of craziness. No, it's just not. It's not right. You are not naturally afraid. That's why fear doesn't feel good. You're not naturally afraid. That's why people want to make you afraid because they know you panic when you get afraid. Why do you think they blitz in football? Why do you think they press in basketball? Why do you, why do you think they say pressure bust pipes? Yeah, when people start getting nervous and afraid and uptight, they panic and they make decisions they wouldn't normally make. It's not a natural thing. It's a learned thing. It's a conditioned thing. You're afraid of something. Everybody's afraid. Oh, we're born with fear. Really? Then why do kids chase balls out in the middle of the street, not thinking about getting hit? Why do you think they just ready to cross the street and they're going right now? Why do you think they, they're not, a, they're not, they're not. We're not. We've been conditioned to believe that we are. Then everybody tells each other and we believe not the truth. We believe what we hear all the time. You're not naturally afraid. You're not naturally sick. You're not naturally broke. You're not naturally worried. You're not naturally stressed. You're not, I'm so stressed. People say like it's some kind of badge of honor. Oh yeah, girl, I'm working so hard. I'm just so stressed, you know, but God is good. How is God a good and you're stressed? So either that thing is lying or you not listening. But you can't get both. I don't think Tina ever said, well, I did this, but Ike is good. <laughs> Come on, man, like, you got it. You got, we could, <laughs> uh, I don't think I ever won person of the year. I don't think he could be doing no marriage counseling. Right? So God is not good and you stressed. Either that, either that is, that is, those are not congruent. That's like me trying to get on the plane with your ID. Which one is it? Somebody's lying. Right? No. God is good because you have the victory in all things. God is good because you're more than a conqueror, you're an overcomer. God is good because God can say, peace be still. God is good because it says, beloved, I wish above all things. Karen, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as soul prosper, even as your soul prospers. That you have the victory in all things, that you're more than a conqueror, that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, no harm shall come nigh your dwelling. So if no weapon formed against you shall prosper, no harm shall come near you, what in the heck can you be afraid of? Like, what, what do you got to make up now? What else can you find? You're just making up stuff? But humanity is, is brilliant. Boy, we can make up some stuff. We can find some stuff to be afraid of. Do you know there's a, I think I told you guys this in the, in the new DS, DS, DSMR or DMS, one of the two. Yeah. DSMR, they're coming up with a new thing called cheerophobia, where you're literally afraid to be too happy. I mean, do you want to talk about the endless and infinite stupidity we can literally lower ourselves to or raise ourselves to? I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's lowering or raising our stupidity. I don't know which level it is, which direction. But we can literally be afraid of being too happy. How do you do that? So who are you going to, so are you telling a depressed person you could be too happy? Are you telling a dead person, you know what? You could be too happy. I mean, I wouldn't, it ain't all that, all that's cracked up to be. Like, like we literally will make up some stuff. It's just, but it goes to show you that consciousness inside humanity can believe itself to be anything. Blind, crippled, crazy. We can believe ourselves to be anything. And we, and we do. All right. We got a couple minutes left. Questions, comments. So I can get you out on time. I'm just basking right now. I'm not, I don't have a question or anything. I'm just basking. You went off. You warned us though, to be fair. You did warn us and tell us that you were going to jump out the gate. And so I can't be surprised, but I'm still surprised. Coach Lucky, you are supposed to be here. I told um, all this week I programmed I Am Perfect into my uh, alarms. And so I had multiple alarms going off throughout the day. Remind me, I am perfect. I am perfect. 
uh, just the way that I am. I am perfect. And my son came up to me at the end of the week. Um, he came home from school and he came up to me and he was just like, mom, like, I just have to give you your flowers. Like you are a perfect mother. I want you to know that I love you and I appreciate you as my mother, the way you are. Like, don't change nothing about how you, how you mom me pretty much. And when I tell you the tears fell down my face because I had put in the, the mental, the, the, the equity mentally first, like I am perfect. There is nothing wrong with me. I've been around the wrong people. That's the problem. Like I've been listening to the wrong voices and not my own. I was always a salute. He took, and Gavin tells me this every morning, like clockwork, mom, you were always the solution. You were never the problem. Imagine your baby telling you that, like when you were conditioned your whole life to be taught, you were the problem. So I just want you to know uh, your your review that I'm writing as y'all are talking, your review that I'm writing right now for your website, it's going to be phenomenal because you deserve oh, okay. it. Okay, thank you. You deserve that. Like you are attracting business. Like you make me want to bring you business, man. Mm -hmm. We met in person one time. You make me want to bring you clients, Coach Lucky, because you over here helping people to like evolve out of their minds. Mm -hmm. Jesus. And like, thank you. Just thank you. Well, Very, honor, pleasure. Excuse, honor, me, pleasure. excuse me, real quick, because I can't, yeah. can't never not do this. Yes. Vero, if it weren't for you, baby girl, a lot of us wouldn't even be here. So, Coach Lucky, don't ever in your life get it twisted. We love you, oh, but don't play with it because we all protected that one right there. We all here for that one right there. You can't, you ain't going to do it like this. You'll do it, but you ain't going to do it like this without that one right there in that blue shirt. So yeah. I can't let you forget that. Yeah, I love right. you both. Thank you're you right. so much. You're right. And I'm glad to hear that you applied what we have been talking about and you proved it to be true. Whether you knew it or not before, it's always good to prove it because it lets you know that, what do we like we always say, what you say to yourself, somebody's going to say to you. It may take a minute, may take a week or a month, but it's going to happen. And, and it goes to show you the effect that you have on your physical world. And you're proving it to yourself. And so now that you saw that and you continue to see that by continue to apply, you would have never saw it if you didn't apply it. You would have never saw it if you didn't do it. That's why I always implore you all to apply what we're talking about. It's not about me. It's about the information. But you'll never know. You'll never know what's true if you don't apply it. If you just come and hear it and listen and cut your computer off and congratulate yourself. No, but actually start applying it as a lifestyle. You'll never see the benefits as Sparkle Bailey was just talking about. So congratulations. I'm so happy to hear that you applied it, that you continue to approve to, to prove that it's true and that it will continue to, to inspire you to keep doing the same thing. Whatever you said about yourself, someone else will say. Whatever you say about your money, something, your physical world will re respond. It will about your health, about anything that you say that about, like you said, consistently. All right, so congratulations and definitely thank you for letting me know. It's always wonderful to hear. The last thing Gavin wanted me to tell you, he won his game. He has two games today. He won the first game and he just wanted everybody to know that he wishes that he could be here, but he's also proud of himself. So he just wanted to send that vibration to everybody. So I'm going to tell him I say congratulations. That's right. Congratulations. Tell him to do it for me. <laughs> do it for me. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay, anyone else? Any questions or anything like that about what we said today? Or comments or anything about that? Or we got it? Well, you just okay. reminded me of when someone, um, we just said how some people take stress or say I'm so stressed and wear it as a banner of honor, or at least they put it out there like that. And the truth of the matter is, for many years, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand how someone could be stressed or depressed. And I would always come with some uplifting, I thought, inspiring, motivating kind of thing, showing them all the pluses in their lives versus the minuses. Why are you feeling this way? But it is actually a condition that my little motivation spiel and what have you had no effect, but I was ignorant to the fact that I wasn't the picture of that. But on the other hand, I was glad that I was open to the fact that you can change, you can feel good, you can see clear and all those things. And you basically just confirm that at a stage in my life where I'm much more mature. So what you're giving me has much more impact. And yes, I have receipts. 
There you go. That's it. There you go. Strong J. I like it. I like it. Wonderful. Wonderful. I just want to say thank you, Coach Lucky. And just like everybody else, like the receipts, the receipts are there. And I'm not crazy when I say even when things are not going, seemingly going my way, they are going for my highest favor because at the end of the day, everything works out for, for me and the way I need it to be. So thank you. Wonderful. That's a key word, seemingly. Seemingly. You have to condition, you meaning all of us, you have to condition your mind to know that everything is the way you say it is, regardless of how it looks, just like you know your name, regardless of how anything else looks. It doesn't change your name. The weather doesn't change your name. The economy doesn't change your name. People agreeing or disagreeing doesn't change your name. Nothing changes your name, what you believe yourself to be. So seemingly, only, only the perspective of seemingly, whether it is up or down, so to speak, whether, you, whether the seeming takes you down or the seeming just keeps you up, it's only based on who you believe yourself to be. What is your name? Meaning what is the state of mind you're occupying that you're unwilling, that you're pledging allegiance to, that you're unwilling to move? I am this. This is my name no matter what. Well, I am this no matter what. So seemingly, this is happening, but I am this no matter what. Seemingly, I'm still this name. Seemingly, I'm still this thing. I am still this. And then you'll realize how much seemingly is almost like in the Bay Area up here, there's fog all the time and it seems so thick. But once you're driving through it, it seems so thin. Right? It's just a, it's, you're looking at it like, good Lord. Then once you get in, you're like, oh, this ain't, it's seemingly seemingly, but what things seem are based on the looker, based on the observer. And who is the observer? You, who, who is that? Who are you, right? Who do you believe yourself to be? That's what dictates what seemingly is to you and what it makes it, what it makes you feel like. And if you can make a choice and keep your mind, not change your mind, you can change what you see. Hey, Coach, I just want to thank you for confirming. Um, like, my whole life, I just felt like I was in the twilight zone as I'm looking at the way people behave and telling me I'm weird or I'm the crazy one. And I'm like, mm, I don't think so. <laughs> so this is, just, this is just confirmation. And just just thank you. Today was amazing. Well, every, every time with you is amazing. But today was phenomenal. And just thank you. It's my pleasure. And you just realize, like I said, as you go on this journey, you stop caring what everyone else think, not because you're against other people, but because you realize they don't have the power to affect your outcomes the way you previously thought they did. So then you don't mind what they think. You don't, because you don't need them to think a certain thing. You realize all you need is what you think. So then you're able to give people more grace or more space to be themselves. They just may have to do that over there, right? But you give them more grace and more space to be themselves because they have a right to think crazy just as much as you have a right to think what you're now thinking. Right. It's they have that right. Right. But it just but you're OK with that now because you realize that they don't have the power to affect your world the way we previously thought they did. And the reason we want to change people all the time and change and make everybody else be like us or do this or that is because a lot of times we think in order for us to live the life we want, they have to be something different. They have to be something else. And the only thing the only thing we ever have to change in order for our life to change is ourselves. And, and the more we do that, and the better we do that, the more we're aware of that, the more things will change, the faster they will change, and the less you'll just care about what everyone else is doing. Not in hate or judgment, you just realize they have no power to affect you. They don't have a power to change you or stop you or do anything to you, right? They're just people in your world that are reflections of you, and as you move, right, things move to reflect you. So you keep doing what you're doing, keep thinking true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report, that you're always prosperous and in good health, even as your soul prospers, that all the world loves you, means you well, and treats you kindly, and is a link in the chain of your good, that everyone loves you, and everyone loves to love you, and, and appreciates you, and respects you. You get to choose how you think. You don't have to condition that on what other people say, or what other people think. This is your life. If you're an adult, you're grown, you choose what you think. Just like you choose what you buy at the store. Just like you choose what car you drive drive or where you live, you choose that. And you will see that you will drive the car you want. You'll live where you want. You will live the life you want because you are always in control. Perfect. Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Hey, well, thank you all. It's 904. So I want you to get out. Uh, is there anything you want to say? Um, just 
just uh, put it in the chat already for those who have not um, heard of or signed up for the weekly club, the oh. mentality club. Um, I'll put it again here, the link. If you want to sign up, it's Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 3 p.m. Eastern. And it's for an hour, and we get all the smoke all over again from Coach Lucky. Um, he has it structured where it's all smoke Monday, it's all smoke Wednesday, and then Friday we'll get some smoke with some Q&A. Okay. So, um, yeah, a lot of personal attacks today, but that's okay because, you know, it's for, it's for good. So, thank you. I appreciate you quoting me here and there. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Hey, well, thank you all. Always an honor and pleasure to see you, to be here with you, to share this time with you. Have a wonderful rest of your Saturday and weekend. And I uh, hope to see you, some of you, hope to see you, whoever wants on Monday. Otherwise, I will see everybody else on Saturday. Have a great day, a great weekend, and we'll catch up. See you guys. Peace. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.